This is a video for the level three experiment standard um, for NCA maths, or more specifically statistics. It's an overview of what's needed for the experiment standard uh, aimed at level three statistics students and scholarship statistics. We'll start with an overview of the standard. So this uh, standard is looking at being able to understand the results from some kind of statistical experiment um, with the purpose of trying to investigate causality. So that's slightly different to the other standards on the statistics program. So for example, with bivariate data, you're just looking to see if there is a relationship. With experiments, you're specifically looking to see if there's a causal relationship there. So if you can try to work out if one thing causes the other thing to happen. Whereas in bivariate data, you were just looking for whether there's a relationship and you couldn't necessarily say that one caused the other. You might have had an inclination as to which way it would go, but you wouldn't have the evidence for it. This standard is about finding those evidences. So you report outcomes using the same sorts of methods that you use for the formal inference standard. So if you haven't studied that yet, you might want to go away and have a look at formal inference first. It might make the rest of this um, experiment standard a bit easier. Um, but you should be able to just get on with experiments uh, by itself as well. So you are going to critically analyze an experiment and the statistical significance of the outcome. So that's important. This is what separates people who do stats from just your everyday Joe blogs, is that you can talk about statistical significance and doing some calculations that say whether the outcomes we've got are actually statistically significant or not for us to be able to make calls from them. It's very similar to formal inference, like I've said before, but instead of it being data that you've observed from a sample, um, this is about where you actually record data from an experiment that's been deliberately set up to try to test something. Now, there are two ways that you could design your experiment. The first one that we'll talk about is where you set it up so that it has the same participants that you're measuring some sort of data for under two different situations. So group one and group two, they're the same people. So it could be like a before and an after. Um, so it might be that you test out responses to something um, by testing these participants before you put in some kind of treatment and then you test their responses afterwards. So it's the same people in the um, two different sets of measurements that you're comparing. So for example, it could be how long they can maintain their balance and then you apply them with alcohol and see how long they can maintain their balance afterwards. So it's the same participants and that one is we want to see what effect the alcohol has on their ability to perform that task of balancing. There'll be more that goes into the experimental design to try to think around things of making it um, fair and trying to minimize variation and things, but that's the basic of it. So this will often be displayed as a scatter graph and possibly with arrows between each pair of dots of data that show the link between the two measurements for the same person. So if you have an arrow graph, that arrow is showing that person's or that participant's, because um, of course it might not be people, could be mice or something, but the participant in that experiment, if you've got an arrow on there, it's showing their result in under one condition and then the result under the other condition and an arrow between them. So here is an example, oh, I forgot to say, this is called a paired comparison. So you're pairing up somebody's result from one situation to their result in, the, in another situation. And it looks something like this. So this is some data from year 12s who ran an experiment where they uh, we're trying to work out if a calming video had an effect on reducing heart rate. So they tested out their, um, their heart rate in beats per minute before they watched the video, then they watched this calming video, and they measured the heart rate afterwards in beats per minute. So each of those arrows is one person's pair of results. So it's their heart rate before at the top, and the heart rate after at the bottom. And the arrow tells you which way it went, whether they, their heart rate went up or down. The second way you could set up um, 
your design for an experiment, and this is often done in things like drug trials and stuff like that, is to have two different groups of participants. So they are two completely different people, or mice or rats or guinea pigs, or whatever it is that you're doing your experiment on. And um, some kind of data measure that you're going to do on these two different groups under the two different situations to compare the outcomes. So this is often um, referred to as having a control group and then a group that receives the intervention. And you study what happens to the control group and you study what happens to the, the group that's receiving some kind of treatment um, and you see what the difference is. So for example, we could apply this to people suffering from the flu. And we might have a control group um, of the people that don't receive any treatment for the flu. So we would expect there to be some kind of improvement. Maybe they're measuring something like white blood cell count in the flu sufferers and seeing if it improves or something like that. And so then the other group would be the flu sufferers that are being given, given some kind of trial flu medication to see if it can help them recover from flu faster. Right, so a few pointers about your general experiment design is that participants must be assigned to each group randomly so that you can reduce any possible bias. So this is called randomization. So you randomly allocate them to be in the control group um, or the treatment group, the group that's going to actually have something happen to them. That's if you're doing um, control and um, alternative experiment design. If you're doing a paired experiment and you're testing out two different um, situations for the same participants, you can also randomize which one they do first. So say, for example, you want the same participants to test their memory against reading something that's in color and their memory against reading something in black and white. So you would randomize that so that half of your participants do the black first and then so the black and white first and then the color and the other half will do the color test first and then test it via black and white. So they, you randomize the order of things so that the order can't play a part in making them better or not. You might also carry out repeated measurements. So this would be referred to as replication so that you can try to understand anything about the variability in your response rates. So um, with the memory one, you might get them to do that memory test on three different paragraphs of text that they need to try and memorize or three sets of um, numbers that they're trying to remember the order of uh, whatever it is that you're setting up instead of just doing it once you would do it um, a handful of times for each participant to get more reliable results uh, there's two types of blinding in experiments and by that we mean that the people don't know or the participants don't know what's going on really for them to try to minimize um, things like the placebo effect, which we'll talk about in a second. So it's common to have a single blind experiment, and that means that the, the person participating in the experiment doesn't know which group they're in. So if you're doing a control and a treatment group, they won't know if they are getting the control treatment, uh, the control thing happening to them, which is nothing usually, um, or if they're actually receiving a treatment. Um, they might not actually even know the purpose of the experiment. Generally speaking, if you can minimize the amount of information the participants know about it while still remaining ethical, um, then you'll have some more reliable results. Double blind is when the person running the experiment also doesn't know which thing they're administering. So if you're doing it on medication, for example, you might have a control group that's receiving a dummy pill they're getting um, a tablet that actually has nothing in it, and then another group that's receiving the actual treatment. So if it's double blind, then the person administering those tablets to the groups also won't know which is which, so they can't influence um, the outcomes of that experiment. They can't be tempted to round numbers up for the treatment group and round numbers down for the control group, that kind of thing. You also need to try and consider other sources of possible variation and try to control for them. So if we go back to that idea of the memory testing, you would want to do things like make sure that they are in um, an environment in which they can concentrate and they are free of distractions, um, that they get told all of the information up front of what's expected of them. All of those things that are going to try to minimize any potential problems that could happen while you run the experiment.
Now to talk about the psychology of actually running an experiment, sometimes just knowing you are part of an experiment can change human behavior. And so you try to minimize that as much as you can, but sometimes it's unavoidable and you might need to consider that as part of your conclusions. So if you're testing for um, whether memory is improved by whatever treatment you're, you're introducing, if those participants know that their memory is being tested, then they might actually behave better, concentrate better, um, and perform un you know, in an unusual way. And so you'd need to try to counter for that and um, understand it in your discussion. The other thing is the placebo effect that I referenced um, just a little bit before, where it's a strange phenomenon of, of human behavior, which is if you're told that you're being given a treatment or you think you're receiving the treatment, then you can often display improved results even when you're not actually receiving that treatment.